Hi and welcome back to video two. Uh, in this video I'm going to break it down. We're basically going to put a lot of detail into our body now. We're going to put um, uh, stamps on it. We're going to put logos on it. We're going to add scratches and dents and we're going to tarnish the paint. So there's lots of stages going on here but it's all the detail that's going to make it look really interesting basically. Okay so the first thing we're going to do and you can see me doing this now go into the base layer material and start playing with the dirt values inside uh, inside that material so you can see it's got a dirt layer so I guess I go into there and I start playing with all the values in the sliders to try and get a convincing dirt layer that's the first thing I do and you can see me doing that in this video it's it's not a dirt layer I've added it's already there it comes with the smart material so it's worth playing with that and getting that just right just how you want it and now here you can see me playing with the gradient the reason I'm playing with the gradient because I want the dirt to come up come up from the bottom uh, not so much at the top because we're going to add a layer later uh, to to work on the top but this is just dirt that's coming up from the bottom and that's what the gradient uh, value does it uses a gradient quite literally to place dirt onto the object and you can now play with those values to say where you want it to start and where you want it to end and how gradual you want it to sort of fade out start playing with it until it's subtle you don't want it to be in your face and uh, this is just something that's grown, if you like, from the bottom up. Dirt that's been added, maybe splashed on from the ground, splashed on from any surface that it's been sitting on. And um, it's already there for you within the material. I play with transparency as well on the layer uh, to sort of subtle, make it a bit more subtle. And... Um, Try different blend modes as well. See where that, see where that takes me. It's always worth experimenting and trying different blend modes, trying different things to see where, see where you can get the best value from already existing sort of elements of a of a, of a smart material that's already been created. I mean, it's fairly easy to create a smart material. If you create a material that you like within Substance, you can actually save that out as your own smart material and then place it on your shelf for later use, which is a pretty cool feature as it happens. Okay, so I get to a point where I'm really happy with this uh, dirt layer and I kind of leave it at that for now. I may come back to it later, but it looks pretty good now. And um, yeah, time to move on to the next stage. So the next stage, I add a, what I call a paint layer. And the reason why I call it a paint layer is because you can literally just paint into, into the actual layer whereas a fill layer you can't do that you can only paint into the mask layer of that of that layer but here you can literally paint directly into the layer um, so whatever your values are set at when you paint into that layer is what will be dropped down onto your objects and then if you go back and adjust your layers so like sometimes you'll see me paint just paint sometimes you'll see me paint uh, with paint and height map and sometimes you'll see me paint with, you know, with roughness, height, no color, and lots of different combinations. And each time you can do that with one of these layers, it just sets your paint, whatever strokes you make, it sets the values that you've set at any given time. And you can change them, it doesn't change any previous uh, settings that you had previously. And that's quite powerful. Okay, so the first thing I start doing is just turning on the height and the normal map, just leave that on. Uh, no color, no metal, no ambient inclusion, no roughness. And I just start pushing dents. I just start making dents into my You can see that, a massive big dent. It just, you know, that's what's great about it. You can use the height map and the normal map just to push dents. Just switch off the other values over there on the right hand side, the other channels, and you can just paint into your height map and into your normal map. And I go around and I make lots of dents into my object. That's it. Simple. It's pretty, pretty powerful. Pretty interesting. Because uh, it means you can just focus on one thing at a time. You don't have to be overwhelmed by everything all at once. You know, I want dents, so I'm just going to focus on my dents. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to paint that later. And then I'm going to come back and do this later. And you can do it, you know, step by step and get it really nice and get it exactly how you want it. 
So I'm focusing on the dents at the moment. And once I'm happy with the dents, I then start adding some scratches and some gouges into the actual paintwork. Using the same uh, height and normals, I just start, I use some of the scratch brushes that come with substance and I start scratching away at the surface. And I kind of rotate the scratches and you can switch off all the values so that so when you brush it just stays static so make sure you do that um, and then you can just rotate it using the align uh, icon down there on the right hand side you can align the brush to however you want it to be so if you want it just going across sideways you can just align it and boom you can have scratches sideways any way you like now I am adding scratches and gouges and for me this is the fun part I just like adding this kind of detail it, you know it's really really fun I try and imagine where this object has been you know, if, if it's been pushed along some sort of uh, you know, if it's on the back of a truck it's been pushed along scraping along other objects scraping along sort of the sides of a track and bouncing around it's going to get dented and scratched and that's kind of what you try and achieve. You get reference for that, and we've seen that in our reference material. And you know, you try and emulate that. And one of the key things about this kind of artwork is to study, is to study, is to look, really look at your at your reference, and really understand what's happened to your object. It's like I was saying in the previous video. You know, tell us tell a story. Uh, and that story comes from this kind of work, this kind of this this chunk of detail that you're now applying to the object. I do go to town a bit with the scratches and the dents and the marks, and uh, I do end up sort of rubbing them out and damping them down a bit because I did go a bit overboard. You can go, you can do too much. That's one thing I will say. You can do too much of this kind of work. So you've got to make sure you balance it out make sure you do enough but not too much you know just to give the impression um so just be careful there you go I'm, you can see me you know damping in damping down the scratches there still only got my height map and my normal map selected none of the other uh, channels are switched on the colors off the metals off rough is off and so is ambient occlusion it's just the height and the normal i've, I've got switched on here just cleaning it up, just just sort of taking it back a bit. The surface for me at the moment is too glossy. We're, we're going to fix that next, I think. And this is me just adding some extra surface detail, um, as if it's sort of rusting underneath the uh, paint a little bit. So you're just adding height, and the paint's already on there, so you're not adjusting that at all. And it just looks like uh, rust is bubbling up from underneath, which is pretty cool. You know, it's really down to your imagination. You can just go wild with this kind of thing on all types of objects. I mean, Substance has a fantastic library in Substance Share and Substance Source. Um, there's there's a lot of you know materials and stuff, but it's it's this that it really is this that gives it character and. Um, it's going to make your object stand out. So now I've switched colour on. I'm just starting to add a bit of colour into the into the work, into the mix here. A bit of, as if it's got dirt, extra dirt around these sort of lumpy bits that I've put on the side here. Because dirt would gather, it would gather in these little crevices and in the in, in the scratches and the dents. It would gather in these places. And now you can see I start to do some sort of stain work. So these scratches, or sort of this rust that's on there, if rain sort of dribbled down the side, for example, uh, it would drag the dirt and the colour of that stain down the side of the object. And that's kind of what I'm trying to emulate there. And over time, it would just get more and more stained as it, as it sort of dribbled down the side. A little trick actually I think I'll start using it but you can use if you hold down shift if you click hold down shift move your mouse um, it will it'll let you do a straight line I start using that in a second I think yeah there you go so you can see me using that feature is really useful just so just click left where you want it to start hold down shift move your mouse and then 
click again and it will draw a line based on the values that you've set the levels that you've set your brush really useful tool if you want something nice and straight and this this layer that I've created at the top here currently called layer one which is not good I'll change that in a moment um, but this layer gives me a license to just tweak things to add things to add extra elements just paint them in by hand um, which is really cool and I always have one of these sort of layers in my um, in my material my materials when I'm painting just extra you know it's just so you can add your own artistic touch to it that's really important because one of these layers you can do absolutely anything you want with your own free hand so I'm going to town a bit now with some stains adding a lot more stains where the rain where the rust is and where it would sort of dribble and get damp and come down the side of the container and if you can see it's a lighter color it's a lot got a lot more saturation in it and that kind of makes it pop a little bit more which is quite nice because it's sitting on top of the green as well it's not sitting underneath like the previous okay so the next thing I want to do is get rid of this shininess it, I don't want it to be as shiny as that because it's quite an old pot I don't think it would be that shiny so we can do two things here first we can go into our our base metal here and just take down or bring up the roughness value bring up the roughness value I and mean, if you take it right out it would just be completely non shine but that's not good so bring it down that's the first thing we want to do and the next thing we want to do we want to break this up because it's you know a bit like this this dirt layer is good but it's not doing the full job that I want it to do I have another material in my pure ref here um, let me just bring it on and you've got this this is the kind of thing I want so it's like old after a while it gets stained old oh, different shades of the same color in their blobs and marks uh, and I know I've kind of got that a bit here but I kind of want it all over really and I want to break up the sheen here so what I'm going to do is on top of this machinery I'm going to add a fill layer and that's expected and I'm going to change the color of that to the actual color of the green you can do that just by grabbing this dropper and putting it over that color in fact wherever you move this over your screen will change the color of that object of that selection there so just hover it over the metal base color and it will be exactly the same now we're just going to make it a bit darker just pull it down like this okay now we're going to add a black mask like so and then we're going to add a smart mask now i think i tried this stain and scratches let's have a look at that stain and scratches so let's just drop this into there and kind of doing something but not really that much so let's go into the editor adjust let's do the invert first okay so that's taking it right down and let's go back to our material here and make sure the roughness is up quite far because I want this to really stand out compared to the to underneath and I might just give it a very subtle bit of height here as well and if I do a lot you'll see it gets scratched well, I just want to do a very subtle amount Dink. that much now let's go back into our editor turn off that turn off the global invert okay you're getting that kind of dirt sort of marks I'm gonna blur that a little bit so we've got a bit of global blur here just a subtle amount just to take the edge off there we go and now I'm gonna make it okay I've just noticed something if you look on here you can see you can see the seams Let's see if I can see well let's see this. you can see this seam down here and that's because you need to go into your textures texture 2 texture 1 there you go okay so and go down to triplane and make sure that's on and then texture two, triplanar on. 
like that and that'll get rid of it it'll scatter your image a little bit but we can now adjust that without without having any sort of seams in our our image there okay so let's go back to the top and start playing with these balance we can bring it right on yeah we've got to be careful it doesn't take away too much of our thing up there too much of our Gotta be careful it doesn't take too much away from our corner edge there. Um, okay, so let's just change that back. Let's bring that balance back down. If we turn that off, we can still see it. Okay, I think I need to move this below the rust. Into there. There you go. Okay, that's more like it. In fact, let's move it down below the dust as well, because the dust would be on top. That's better. Okay, so now we've got some movement here. Um, it's a bit in your face. Looks like some sort of skin rash or something at the moment. So we need to adjust this mask editor here. Um, you know, a lot of this is about experimentation. Okay, so now I've got these, got it to a point where I've played with these values and I'm quite happy with that. I've got it to a point where I can see some of the gloss coming through, but the, the sort of old tarnished sort of paint is sort of blocking bits of it off. And, and you can see that in the lighting there. Let me just move the lighting around. And you can sort of see that works now. That's much better. That's more realistic kind of what would happen to the paintwork over time it would probably be flaking and peeling on to be honest but i think i don't want to go that far i think this is this is what i want this is fine uh, and i moved the uh, layer into my machinery below the dust and rust because it was taking out some of this rust and this dirt and i didn't want that to happen so i moved it into the uh, into the actual main material machinery material i think now in terms of dirt and layer and, and rust i think i'm going to leave it there that's that's probably as much as i'm going to add and that's fine that's pretty cool it's very very old looking pot now that's scratches and dents and dirt discolored paint it's all on there it's, it's telling a bit of a story it's been around for quite some time and that's cool Let's put these uh, embossed numbers and, and logos on here. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to do that now. Okay, so I'm going to line it up so I can put it directly sort of down the middle of my pot. So I'm going to have one sort of down. Let's have a look on the other side. Yeah, okay. So one at the top, maybe... No, I'm going to put it across here. It's going to have this painted. I've got two images which I've brought in. Let me just go and find them. Click on project. Okay, so here's one. Uh, 493. I'm going to emboss that on there to make it look like somebody's painted a number on there. And this is my little logo which I'm going to emboss to make it look like a sort of metal stamp. And I'm going to put that down here. So one there and one there so let's get started on that now there's two ways of doing numbers and logos well there's actually a few ways but i'm going to show you two different ways uh, the numbers i'm going to show you i'm going to use the projection method here um, so we're going to click on this over here oh, no sorry on projection so click on that and you'll see this so this little box appears over your model now, all you need to do is make that your brush. So double click on that, and there you have it. All right, so just make it the size you want, you know, modifying your brush size. And then you can just go, well, actually, we need to make a layer for this. Let's just make a paint layer. Okay, all right, so if we just go, Bosch, turn that off, turn, there we are. We painted it on there. Oh, obviously, it looks too new and fantastic. <laughs> like it's just been painted. Uh, but we can adjust that. Okay, so let's just drag this down because I want it 
below my dirt, below my rust. Boom. Already it looks a lot better. Let's bring it down, down, down. So let's see what it's like below our new dirt layer. It might be too hidden. No, that's cool. I'm just going to play with the blender mode. I think I liked... Is it soft light? Yeah, because it gives it a very subtle look and it blends it in with the background quite nice. And that's pretty cool. We can even take down the opacity if you want to just faint it out a bit more. Just a little bit like that. We can also get our razor, change our brush like so. And get our dirt. And we can just chip away at this a little bit just to make it feel a bit more like it's just sort of chipped off and... Yeah, that looks like it's been on there for a very long time. That's very cool. Okay, so that's that one done. The next one is our logo on the bottom here. Make sure we get it in the smack bang in the middle. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to add a fill layer in here. What's the layer one? That's the numbers. Okay, so we're going to add it in there. Let's just rename this so we don't get confused. It's really important to keep your naming convention correct okay so now we're going to add a fill layer in there uh, that's fine for now we're going to add a black mask and in this black mask we're going to add a paint add a paint layer there okay right so in the paint layer so with the paint layer selected i want you to select in the grayscale here Yep, you can see how we already had it, so I've just cancelled it out. So in grayscale, we're going to get our logo here. I'm going to drag it over and drop it in so it becomes our brush. We stamp it down, we can see it appear. Okay, so let's just zoom in, get the size right. How big do we want this? Get the Make sure the orientation's right. Get the object in the right place because I want it both. I want it smack bang in the middle here, so that it's in line with this one here. And let's straighten it up. Roughly about there. Okay. I'm not quite sure how that's going to come out. Okay, so now let's go back to our layer here. We can change the color of that. We can even make it the same color as this if we want to. Um, I think like that, just for now. And then we can change the height on it so it becomes embossed or inwards, like so. So it's indented or it's embossed, which do we prefer? Let's have it embossed because that's pretty cool. It's even got the established there. It's very subtle, but that's good because it kind of makes it look a bit old. You can actually shine it up, make it particularly shiny or rough, but it's got it's underneath these layers, so it's gonna adopt all of that scratching, that denting, and the dirt that we have applied. So that's pretty cool. We don't want it to be a metallic. Uh, we can change the color of it if we want to very subtly maybe that's a good idea just to make it pop out a little bit maybe it's a little bit more rusty and we're going to work into it in a little bit um, so it looks like it's been knocked around a bit scratched on the edges a bit more that's kind of cool i like that and it's kind of in line it's quite small but that's fine i quite like it okay so can we do to this before we start going at it no that's fine okay so back up to the top to our dirt layer here and we can sort of add add you know do you remember this um where is it like this we're not going to get such fine speckles and details not what i'm after i'm just after this subtle sort of hint of dirt collected in around the letters and um and that dirty old sort of look because this is what happens naturally so we want to try and emulate that a little at the very least so it's kind of blurry which i kind of like okay so we're back onto our dirt let's come down here that color's gonna be white here we don't want that let's make this quite a dark 
gritty color down here. Okay, so let's just start. We've only got our color selected here. So let's just start poking around in amongst these shapes to get some of that dirt that we saw. This will make it pop out a little bit more as well, which would be quite fun. We can actually make that dirt look like it's sort of I'm just holding shift there. That's all I'm doing. Let's undo that. It's just working around the shapes. I'll do this now. Let's put it on fast forward. Just watch here. I'm not going to touch these little letters down here because I want them to sort of stay as clear as you can just make them out and if we increase the, the textures up to 4k you'll make that out quite nicely but I want that just to sort of show up so I'm just going to leave that because I think that's fine I think it's fine as they are be careful you don't overdo it because it kind of looks like I've drawn that a bit so if we get an eraser and we just take out some of this that I've drawn in because it looks a bit weird okay what we're going to do now is destroy some of it <laughs> that sounds a bit odd but we're going to see where these dents are working we can add a bit more of that I think too colorful I think there we go I like that probably bring up the height a little more to make it pop out a bit more there we go So, you know, but your choice of brush is is important as well because it kind of makes a difference how it's applied to your mesh, obviously. And this kind of this brush here is the dot one, so just a little bit more subtle than the dirt ones, which is what I'm, what I'm after. And it kind of spreads it out a bit. Some of these logos on these old pots and cans you can't even make out so yeah, i think we're on the right track here there we go i'm going to leave it at that that's really stands out quite nicely okay that's it i'm not going to do any more work to this i'm just going to leave it at that i think that's a pretty good decent uh demonstration of a, of an old looking pot with character and with history with a story to tell why have i got that on orthographic put it back on perspective mode there we go and yeah it looks pretty cool and now we're going to move on to the lid and the handle and we're going to take it from there so i'll see you in the next video bye for now mm -hmm.